Folks, this is one of the most strange, bizarre things I've ever built, and um, I still don't understand exactly how it works, but I built this stubble field coil a week or so ago, and I showed you the whole process of how I struggle with this thing getting it to work, and then I kind of lost interest in it and started doing some other things lately, like that barber pole, but just for kicks this morning, I soaked that in a thing of water to see if it would come back. And it came back to life, and it's running that little magnet right now. And um, like I say, this is the most bizarre, one of the most bizarre things I've ever built, because there's no battery in there. And the galvanic action is between the steel and the copper wire, but it's very slight. But it has this magnetic effect that when you connect on the stubble field coil, one of these inside wires, inside copper wire, to one of the outside uh, steel wires, it creates an electromagnet and uh, beyond what it should. It shouldn't have that amount of effect with that small of a galvanic reaction. And I'll let you listen to what it sounds like here with my little radio. And that's the reed switch clicking. And that's spinning up that little magnet on that mirror. And like I say, I, I, I've built a lot of electromagnets things going way, way back, but I've never seen anything do this before where you have a very slight 0.3 volts is all I'm getting out of this and not that much amperage but it produces enough of a magnetic effect to spin a magnet on a mirror. And uh, I find that very, very interesting uh, after a week or so to take that thing. It had dried out. It still had a little voltage on it, but it had dried out, so I just soaked it in water again and came back to life. And there it is, spinning up a magnet. And uh, anybody else working on these stubble field coils, um, if you follow laser sabers, videos or the five of them uh, pretty closely uh, this does work and I've got the wire to make the secondary on it I didn't finish the secondary but I don't think I'm gonna do it because on these wires right here the reason he got such good results is he used thicker wires than I did and that's surface area and it's really really hard to wind but you get better performance than what I'm getting out of mine and uh, Anyway, um, I'm using like 24 gauge. I think he's probably using 20 to 16 gauge wire, which is hard to wind, but you get better results out of it. And anyway, I just want to share that with people that are struggling with these stubble field coils. They work, and how they work, I still don't understand because the ends of the coils aren't connected. Uh, these windings here are not connected like a normal electromagnet. I'm connecting onto one end of one of the coils and one end of the other coil. And I'm tapping between those two. So there really is no circuit except between the resistance between the coils. So this is not acting like a normal electromagnet. And yet there it is, running away. So anyway, I just want to share this with people that if you're struggling with this double field coil, stay at it. Um, it does work. It's just hard. It's just a hard thing to do. You can make up one of these little stubby stubble fields, play around with it, and uh, it does uh, make a real neat electromag I mean a uh, galvanic battery uh, to play with. But to get this magnetic phenomena, you've really got to build a bigger coil and build it like Laser Saber says to build it. And uh, I don't see this thing um, ever wearing out. I think it'll dry out and stop and then when I want to use it again, I get it wet, and off it goes again. If you put this in the ground, I think it would just keep right on going. I don't know what you'd do with it, but uh, there it is. Thanks for watching.